Now we see I'm not alone in this life So late this smoke filled my life And choked me till I go numb Yeah, baby, late this smoke filled my life No place to hide Now I go, go numb I go numb Productions Who you know remix Shakespeare like we <laughs> 20 years have I gone in travail of you my sons I am like a drop of water that in the ocean seeks a night <laughs> Indy, yo, this is Scanner. Now you have it. It's a rap. That's a rap. Comedy of errors, boy. Start of the year, you denied it could happen. Why were you denying it? You stuck with it. Double trouble, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the whole crew. Too much name to mention. Bosun, hey master, what cheer? Remember who thou you hast aboard. No more amazement. Tell your piteous heart there's no harm. Lower, lower. Oh, 
not touch I've done your throat, but in care of thee It is time I should inform thee first Once upon a time I was the Duke of Milan Loved my life, loved my wife Had a baby girl, called her Miranda Sadly I lost my wife in labour That's when I lost my faith in the saviour How could the Lord take away what he gave ya? It totally broke me, I needed her back Started reading magic that was painted in black Neglected my duties, oh so slack Took myself away in my studies, I was wrapped My brother had to help take the load off my back So I gave him the state just until I came back I loved him, of course I would trust him with that Who would ever think that he would stab me in my back With the king of Naples, he made a pack Brought me out to sea on the raft, made a crap Yeah, I broke I dad, bro all I can zam, I got the enemies in the palm of my hand I gon' blow like the ocean, rage like Satan I sway for revenge, it's obvious and blatant I broke out that bro, all I can zam I got the enemies in the palm of my hand I gon' blow like the ocean, rage like Satan I sway for revenge, it's obvious and blatant We came ashore on this island, bare as could be Then I I was muted. What a start. Good evening, friends. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Intermission Youth's Monologue Slam. We are live again. <laughs> We've got an exciting evening of monologues lined up for you from some of our amazing youth and graduate members. But before we launch into the entertainment, I would like to just uh, let you know a little bit more about the work that we do at Intermission and how we've been managing to keep our young people uplifted and engaged during these uncertain times. So if you're new to the work of Intermission, uh, a very extended warm welcome to you. So there are quite a few strands to the work we do at Intermission Youth. We have our Intermission Youth Theatre, which engages young people from the age of 16 through to 25 from vulnerable backgrounds. And we work with them throughout the year using drama and Shakespeare uh, to help raise confidence, self-esteem, uh, and to encourage them to be better versions of themselves. And in return, of course, they help us to be better versions of ourselves. Um, as well as the youth theatre, we have a, a community engagement programme which takes work into schools, prisons and pupil referral units. And then we have our amazing graduate theatre company. But you can find out more about our work by visiting our website www.intermissionyouththeatre.co.uk and over the course of the evening, you are going to hear more about that wonderful work. So what have we been doing during COVID-19? Well, thanks to the incredible support to, um, of friends, uh, many of whom are in the house tonight, or in your house tonight, rather, uh, we, and also industry professionals and some of our amazing sponsors, we have been able to launch an extensive online programme for young people, including uh, Q&As from our, our patron, uh, Naomi Harris, um, renowned theatre critic, Libby Purvis, the Royal Courts Artistic Director, Vicky Featherstone, uh, and EastEnders, Rudolf Walker, aka Patrick Truman, amongst others. We also have a series of online workshops ranging from movement to mindfulness, a midweek Zoom hangout where our young people come and hang out, and a weekly exploration of The Tempest. So watch this space for our reimagined version later on in the year. But the most important thing we've been able to offer our young people during this time is contact. Being able to be there with a listening ear on the end of a phone 24-7, for our young people and um, finding ways to support them in their needs. So, on to the evening, what you're all here for, I'm sure. Here's how it works. So, we have eight performers for you this evening, each of whom are going to perform a Shakespeare monologue or a Shakespeare-inspired monologue, and then they will receive feedback from our amazing panel. Um, and I'm gonna take this moment now to introduce you to the panel. So first we have actor Jenny Agita, and you may know Jenny from Call the Midwife, or also for the more experienced people in the audience, you may recognize her from the Railway Children. And we're very excited to have Jenny on our panel. And no doubt she's done a few monologues in her time. So welcome Jenny. And Jenny is also a, a great supporter and friend of Intermission. So thank you for, for being with us this evening, Jenny. Next we have Papa, S.E.A. do. And Papa is another actor and a brilliant one at that. Uh, I first saw Papa perform for the RSC uh, playing Hamlet 
and, and what a performance that was, absolutely amazing. And we also brought some of our young people down to see that. And for some of them, it was the first experience of Shakespeare uh, and uh, what an experience that was, it's still etched in their memories today. So thank you for that, Papa. And you can also see Papa in Gangs of London on Sky Atlantic. Um, but this evening, he is in the Intermission Gang, I'm happy to say. So thank you for joining us, Papa. And last but not least, we have the amazing Abigail Suell. And Abigail is a director and also a graduate of Intermission Youth Theatre. And uh, she is a force to be reckoned with, let me tell you. I've seen Abigail do some wonderful projects this year, including I Am Not Kanye West at the Bunker Theatre. And also she AD'd assistant director for Merchant of Venice for the RSC. Uh, and she is a, a wonderful person with a lovely spirit. And I'm proud and honored to have her on the panel with us this evening. So that's our panel. Uh, so um, let's welcome them in the quiet of our hearts. So. There is also an opportunity this evening for you, our audience, to ask questions to our panel um, and also to another friend and supporter of Intermission, actor Mark Rylance. Uh, and for some of you, you may know Mark. For those who don't, Mark was the first artistic director of the globe. Uh, and you may have seen him in Bridges, Bridge of Spies, which was directed by Steve, Steven Spielberg, and he won an Oscar for that. But um, his biggest achievement today, the biggest role that he's landed, should I say, is to become the trustee of Intermission Youth. So Mark is also here with us today in the audience. And at the end of the show, he will join our panel uh, and will be able to answer questions that you have. If you do have questions, please put them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and we'll get as many answered as we can. And uh, throughout the evening as well, there'll be an opportunity if you want to, do to donate to uh, this work, if it's something you would like to support, you will see pop-ups uh, with PayPal and also a QR code. Nice and simple, really easy, very un uncomplicated. So you can get your wallets out and make a donation very quickly, I promise you. All right, cool. On to the evening's entertainment. So I'm going to introduce our first performer and that is a, a graduate of Intermission Youth, Emma. And on lockdown, Emma has been at home and it's been difficult because she feels suffocated. Um, she says, since COVID-19, my views of society have changed and it's not good in a way. During this quarantine, her sister gave birth to two, two twins, two months prematurely, and her family can't go and see them because of the risk of COVID-19. So they have only seen pictures. The monologue slam, she says, has been an experience that's made her realize she needs to polish up her monologue skills and understand even if she is in self-doubt, there are people out there that will help her. So we're gonna go and visit Emma in her space now. And Emma is going to be doing a speech from Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. She'll be playing the part of Mark Antony. And just to put the speech into context, Mark, Mark Antony uh, feels Caesar has been unjustly murdered and addresses the crowd. You must be careful, she must be careful with her words, huh? as people don't share her views, especially Brutus and the conspirators. So let's go over to Emma and see how she gets on. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I've come to bury Caesar, not to appraise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus have told you Caesar was ambitious. If it was so, it was a grievous fault and grievously have Caesar answered it. Here on the leave for Brutus and the rest. For Brutus is an honorable man. So are they all, all honorable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious and Brutus is an honorable man. He had brought many captives home to Rome whose ransom did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor have cried, Caesar have answered it. 
<laughs> ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious and Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the Looper call, I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. And sure, Brutus is an honorable man. I speak not to disapprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to say what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What causes would hold you to them more for him? Oh, judgment. Thou art fled to Brutus' beast, and men have lost their reason. <laughs> Bear with me. My heart is in there in a coffin with Caesar. And I must pause until it comes back to me. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. And uh, keep pausing if you want, because I know a lot of emotion went into that. Um, you're definitely a performer that gives 100% and really commits to the part. Uh, fantastic speech. Um, I always think that Julius Caesar is, is the ultimate knife crime play. Um, and there's so much knife crime in our, in our society today and a lot of young people can relate. I always find with that play when, when we put it in front of them. So we're gonna go over to the panel um, and get some feedback, hear what they have to say. Brilliant. So uh, Jenny, I'm gonna come to you first. Mark Antony, Julius Caesar, your thoughts, please. Jenny, you just have to unmute yourself. Sorry, it's catchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was just lovely, very, very persuasive. And you know, you're you're entirely honest and you draw on things that you're feeling, which is you just comes across beautifully. Um, I I know you were going to do a mo an, an updated version of it, and it's lovely to hear you actually do the, the Shakespeare and, and play with the text in the way that you did. Uh, and it was, um, I, I thought you did a, a wonderful job with this, so thank you very much indeed. I got a lot from it. Brilliant. Thank you, Jenny. Papa, any thoughts on that? Hey, Emma, what a fantastic job. What a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant performance. I thought you were excellent. Um, really super committed. Um, emotionally engaged and like you made it so natural I felt you like yeah I echo what Jenny was saying you were so playful with it and it really felt like you were speaking from yourself so you should be really proud of yourself um, it's not a difficult thing to do I thought you also were fantastic in your connection both to the text and to who you're talking to because it's so difficult to do that when you're looking into a tiny little dot hole camera in your phone or your laptop or your iPad it's a really difficult thing to do but I really felt like you were talking to me which is um which is definitely the most important thing when you're when you're doing a speech so you should, I, I thought that was fantastic well done well done thank you Papa well done Emma um I can see you a little bit emotional there and I know we know that you doubt yourself a lot but look at that isn't that amazing feedback and I always told you that you're brilliant how did you find that um I feel like I put too much pressure on myself because the speech, I tried to connect it to my friend who was murdered and I felt like I wasn't doing it good enough until I spoke to Nana and Darren and that's when I felt like, like I know the speech, I know everything, I just need to put in the work and perform it and that's what I did. Well, you did it brilliantly Thank and, you. and I'm sure your friend will be proud as well. Yeah, all done. All right, thank you, Emma. Thank you, thank you, panel. All right, we're going to go on to our next performer. And that is Alexander, or X, as he likes to be called. Um, and X is a current member of Intermission Youth Theatre. And during lockdown, he says he's working, kinda, in brackets. He's also taking part in our online Tempest workshop as well. 
and his experience during lockdown has slowed down his creative collaboration, but boosted his individual creativity. So we're gonna go over and join X in his space. And X this evening is, is gonna be performing a speech from The Tempest, playing Stefano. And this is a, a reimagined version, which X has come, come up with himself. Uh, and instead of bumping into Caliban, when he comes off the ship, a bit worse for wears, he bumps into something else, which takes his curiosity. Let's find out what that is. I shall know more to see, to see, I shall die sure. Hey, hey, this is a scurvy tune for a man's funeral. Hey, mm, mm. okay, here's my comfort. Here's my comfort. <clears throat> The master, the swabber, the boatsman, the knife, the journal, um, his mate, mm, mm, the Meg, the Moor, the Marian, the Marjorie, but none of us care for Kate. Woo! Mm. <laughs> but she had a tongue with a tang, <sighs> would cry to a sailor, go hang, ow, ow, hey, game, mm. boys, and let her go hang. Hey, that, that's the scurvy tune too. That's the scurvy tune. But here, but here is my comfort. Hey, what's the matter? Hey. Are we devils here? Bro, I'm not skate drowning to be a feared of your Four camera lenses. <laughs> hey. Oh my days, this is a phone of the island with four camera lenses. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Where the devil should it learn our language? Uh, okay, uh, you know what? I'll give it some relief if it be but for that. Yeah, yeah. If I can recover this, keep it tame, and go back to ends, this is a present for any emperor that ever did struggle on its lever. Oh my, oh no, no, oh no. Oh, it's in a fit now, and it doesn't ring after the wisest. You know what? It shall taste of my portable charger. If it had never charged before, we'll go near to remove from its fit. If I can recover this and keep it tame, I won't even ask too much for it. It shall pay for him that have him, and that soundly. Come. Unlock yourself. Come on. Here is that which will give language to you. Come on. Unlock yourself. This will shake your shakings, I can tell you, and that soundly. <sighs> Hold on. Bruv. What's... Oh my days! Four cameras and two screens! I'm a most delicate smartphone. Raw, oh, okay, okay, okay. So the front screen is now to speak well of his friend, but the backward screen is to utter foul speeches and to detract. All right, come. Uh, ah, amen. Okay, all right. 
Now let me try to unlock the other screen. What? <laughs> well, I think that's it. Brilliant. I don't know if we've lost X or if we've lost Stefano. The phone might have swallowed him up. Brilliant. Well done. Well done. My gosh, what a trip. Bro, that was amazing. I was... I don't know. You took me. You took me on whatever journey that was. I was on it. I was with you all the way. I want to see the play. I want to. <laughs> Amazing. We're going to go to our panel. Um, Jenny, I think I'm going to come back to you because you've got a love affair of the Tempest and also um, playing a nun. I'm sure you've been asked to believe some absurd things in your time. So, <laughs> what did you think? Still unmute. Got our unmute, Jenny. I, I just love that X. It was, I mean, I was grabbed, my attention was grabbed right from the beginning. Um, yes, you're very clever with all the visuals, but also just telling the story and then finding the camera and then the camera being ca the Caliban. I just thought it was a wonderful device and, and allowed you to play with all the language in a completely different way. So I, I discovered a lot. Um, and it was entire. Also, you you just engage in a way that you know. I just completely believed you. So thank you. Lovely. Really lovely. Thank you, Abigail. What's your? What did you make of that? X, you killed that. <laughs> yes. I love how imaginative it was, and I feel like it. It for me is just so in line with the work that like you see at Intermission Youth Theatre, and so for, it, it's just. What I love is that you brought yourself to Shakespeare and it didn't feel like you were trying to conform in any way and even like substituting the liquor for the bud. It just, it felt like you were, you were in your element and you were just showing yourself in the character and it felt like you were so connected and engaged. So congratulations, man. Thank you very much. There you go. Now, X, brilliant. So now what we, what you need to know is that Tomorrow or even tonight, I'm gonna to get a phone call from X saying, "See, I told you, I told you." I didn't. I wasn't even gonna do that. <laughs> X brought this idea to me literally today, and I was like, "Whoa, oh, X! I think you need time to develop this one, you know." But he was so kind of keen, and he he said, "Look, D, I've got it. I know what I want to do with it. I just, this this is what I think, and this is what I want to do." I said, "All right, cool." And we spoke about it. And you know what, bro? It worked a treat. Well done to you, man. Amazing. You got anything you want to say to the panel? Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity, because I'm not going to lie, during this, um, during the pandemic, I've, I don't know if I'm the only one, but like you're creating, but then there's a lot of procrastination as well. So I needed something to kind of like work towards, you know what I mean? So um, doing this, you know what I mean? Gave me a deadline. It was tight, but I was able to, you know, at least put my focus into something and then, you know, complete a task. So I felt like I've done something productive during this pandemic. So yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks, X, mate. Amazing. Definitely won't be forgetting that in a hurry. Cheers. Come on. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on then. Our next performer is Kai. And Kai is also in our current uh, IYT program. Uh, he is currently part of another youth theatre as well, the National Youth Theatre, uh, which, is, which has been continuing via Zoom. Um, so... He wants us to know that he's all zoomed out. We really appreciate Kai to have you on this Zoom tonight. Uh, the Monologue Slam experience has been great, he says, working with Phil, uh, who's been ge very generous working with our young people on his monologue and also myself. And, and it's been a pleasure. And he said it's all been very helpful and a lot of learning for him. So Kai, we're gonna go and visit Kai in his space. And Kai is doing Hamlet from Hamlet. And I'll just put it into context for you. Hamlet is grieving the death of his father and cannot understand how his mother has remarried so quickly. And not only that, but with his uncle. Look here upon this picture. And on this, the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See what a grace was seated on this brow. Hyperion's curls, the front of Jove himself, 
an eye like Mars to threaten and command, a station like the held Mercury united on a heaven kissing hill, a combination and form indeed, where every God did seem to set his seal to give the world assurance of a man. This was your husband. Look you now what follows. Here is your husband like a mildewed ear blasting his wholesome brother. Have you eyes? Could you on this fair mountain leave to feed and battle on this moor? Huh? Have you eyes? <laughs> you could not call it love. For at your age, the heyday in the blood is tame. It's humble and waits upon the judgment. And what judgment would step from this to this? Sense, sure you have. Else you could not have motion, but sure that sense is apoplexed for madness will not end. Nor sense the ecstasy was never so thrilled, but it reserves some quantity of choice to serve in such a difference. What devil was in that dust have cozened you a hood man blind? Eyes without feeling, feeling without sight, ears without hands or eyes, smelling sands all. All but a sickly part in one's true sense could not so mope. Oh, shame! Where is thy blush? Thank you, Kai. Thank you. Very good, man. Very good. Thank you. Just need a, I just need a, I think I need a moment, so I can imagine you might need more than a moment. Um, we're going to go to our panel. Uh, Papa, I think it's only right that I come to you. Having played Hamlet, uh, I always admire actors for tackling these speeches because sometimes I think these speeches present themselves to be bigger than life itself. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, what did you make of that? really agree and I really I uh, well done Kai I really think that you did a brilliant job of like taking it away from being a speech a big speech and just making it real you know making it just like a man talking to his to his mother you did that really well um similarly to earlier on I think you you're a really committed actor you really give, give your all to it you show real intelligence you navigate your way through the speech with great kind of dexterity and um, understanding. So that's fantastic. Um, and I really love it when you really kind of like just commit to just asking questions. So there's there's one bit in the middle of the speech where you said, um, um, yeah, what, what, and, and what judgment would step from this to this? And you just asked it. And that immediately took me into your mind, immediately took me into what you were going through. Um, and yeah, I would encourage you to kind of like continue doing that. Just like, especially with these speeches where there, there are questions, no one asks a question unless they um, want an answer. So there's no, I don't think there's really such, there's generally not such thing as rhetorical questions in Shakespeare. Characters are always looking for knowledge. They're always looking for answers. So really commit to answering are asking those questions as if you're 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 searching to get an answer and 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 it's really compelling but really well done well done that means a lot sound brilliant advice thank you papa uh, kai anything you want to say to the panel uh no not, not really it was a great experience thank you i am um, the first production of hamlet that i've seen was actually yours papa at um hackney empire i have made sure that i got there uh, early to get five, five pound tickets and everything so <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't want to be overpaying for a production like that mate <laughs> brilliant all right guy amazing thank you okay we're gonna go on to our, our last performer before we take a little break uh and that is shoma and shoma was a graduate of intermission uh she joined us in 2015 and uh, until 2017 and um during lockdown she's been working and she said there's been, of course, some financial challenges and changes, but it's given her a lot of time to think about exactly what she wants to do with her life.
And um, Choma is going to be performing a piece from Merchant of Venice. So we're going to go and visit her in her space. And she'll be playing Shylock. Uh, I'm just going to pull it into context for you. Um, and then let's let Choma do her bit. So she feels she's been treated unfairly because she is a Jew. again scorned my nation thwarted my bargains called my friends and heated my enemies and what's his reason I am a Jew I've not a Jew eyes I've not a Jew hand, organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions, fed with the same food, hugged with the same weapons, subjected to the, to the same diseases, healed by the same means. Warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer as a Christian is. If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you, if you poison us, do we not die? And if you wrong us, shall we not revenge? If we are like you in the rest, we, we will resemble you in that. If a Jew wrong a Christian, what is his humility? Revenge. If a Christian wrong a Jew, what, what should his sufferance be by, by Christian example? Why, revenge. The villainy you teach me, I will execute, and it shall go hard without better the instruction. Thank you, Choma. Thank you. Oh. It's just incredible, <laughs> that speech always does it to me. It's just so relevant and it's a shame that it can resonate so much today. Um, thank you. We're going to go to the panel. Um, Abigail, I'm going to come to you because I know that you was you assistant director of Merchant of Venice and, and took it on a tour uh, to young people as well. Um, so what did, what did you make of that performance? Chioma, you asked. Hey, girl. Hey, my love, oh. uh, you should be so, 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 so proud because that was flawless. That thank was you, thank you. stunning and heartfelt. And I feel like, I feel like that monologue in particular, I'm, I'm sure can be quite intimidating, but it was yours and you held it and you held us mm -hmm. and we were with you. And every line, every question was with such sincerity. And you also presented a, a real, um, dynamic character of Shylock. You showed us a, a mother who, you know, is in despair and you showed us someone who also, it can be passionate and, and fiery, but, you know, I was on board, I was sold. I was, <laughs> I was with you, amazing. Thank you, Abigail. Jenny, any thoughts? I just, I, the range of it was stunning. Um, because you just went through so much and drew one with one. I mean, I just found it very moving um, and very upsetting, um, very extraordinarily honest. And um, as I say, it just, it really, it really got to me because the questions, as Papa was saying, questions were really put to one and you really had to think about these things. And you realize 
the fault that there is in mankind. I mean, it's a totally modern piece. Yeah. Mm. The prejudice, uh, it's extraordinary. Mm. It's brilliant, well done. We might as well make it up. Beautifully. Might as well make it a full sweet papa. Yeah, well done, Chioma. I think you've got such um, you've got such brilliant grace and presence um, on on camera, even, and no doubt you've got it on stage as well. Um, and I think you require that you you need that kind of like yeah grounding to be able to ask those really really big questions, which are big questions about like flaws in humanity. Um, and yeah, I echo what everyone said. I think you did it brilliantly. So well done. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our first half, or Act One, let's call it that. Um, so we're going to have a 10 minute break and uh, just give you a chance to stretch your legs and have a drink if you want. And uh, this evening, the drinks are on us, so it's absolutely free. So go to your fridge and please help yourself to as much as you want. And please do remember the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen if you've got questions for our amazing panel or our trusty Mark Rylance, please do get your questions in. It's an amazing opportunity to get some, some answers to some of the burning questions that you may have. And during the interval, there'll be a little video that tells you a little bit about the work of Intermission. So uh, we'll see you in 10. Thank you. Intermission Youth was set up in 2008 by Rob and Janine Gillian and Darren Raymond. It has supported hundreds of young people from challenging backgrounds through drama and mentoring. Intermission Youth runs community programmes in prisons, schools and pupil referral units. During this pandemic, we have continued to work on exciting projects with our current cohort and graduates. We appreciate our supporters helping us to continue our work. Please feel free to make a donation.
Intermission Youth Theatre Productions. Who you know remix Shakespeare like we? <laughs> Twenty years have I gone in travail of you, my sons. I am like a drop of water that in the ocean. <laughs> Indy, yo, this is Scanner. Now you have it. It's a rap. That's a rap. Comedy of errors, boy. Start of the year, you denied it could happen. Why were you denying it? You stuck with it. Double trouble, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the whole crew. Too much names to mention. Intermission Youth was set up in 2008 by Rob and Janine Gillian and Darren Raymond. It has supported hundreds of young people from challenging backgrounds through drama and mentoring. Intermission Youth runs community programmes in prisons, schools and pupil referral units. During this pandemic, we have continued to work on exciting projects with our current cohort and graduates. We appreciate our supporters helping us to continue our work. Please feel free to make a donation. Welcome back to the second half of Intermission Youth's Monologue Slam. Uh, I hope you had a good break and got to stretch your legs. What a brilliant first act we had there. Some amazing monologues and, and uh, great feedback from our panel. So we're going to kick off uh, with the first performance of the second act. And that is from Ollie. And Ollie is a current member of the Youth Theatre. And during lockdown, he is furloughed. His experience during lockdown, Oli states, while remaining acutely aware of the pain that has been caused by this awful virus, 
speaking for himself, it's perhaps the best thing that's ever happened to him. He has quit nicotine. Well done, mate. That's a brilliant achievement. Started working out. I'll see the gains. I'll see the gains, my brother. Um, and he's exploded his productivity and got serious about his creative endeavours. It's also allowed him to spend much more time with his mum, who is also furloughed. So Oli is going to be playing Cassius from Julius Caesar. Um, and just to put it into context, Cassius wants his friend Brutus to see in himself what everyone sees in him, namely that Brutus is widely respected more so than Caesar. So we'll go and join Oli now and see what he has to say. I know, I know that virtue to be in you, Brutus, as well as I do know your outward favour. What well, honour is the subject of my story? I cannot tell what you and other men think of this life, but for my single self, I had as lief not be as lived to be in awe of such a thing as I myself. I was born free as Caesar, so were you. We're both fed as well, and we can both endure the winter's cold as well as he. For once, upon a raw and gusty day, the troubled Tiber chafing with her shores, Caesar said to me, darest thou Cassius now leap in with me into this angry flood and swim to yonder point? Upon the word, accoutred as I was, uh, I plunged in and bade him follow. So indeed he did. The torrent roared and we did buffet it with lusty sinews, throwing it aside and stemming it with hearts of controversy. But ere we could arrive at the point proposed, Caesar cried, help me Cassius or I sink. I, as Aeneas, our great ancestor, did from the flames of Troy upon his shoulder, the old Anchises bear, so from the waves of Tiber did I, the tired Caesar. And this man is now become a god. And Cassius is a wretched creature who must bend his body if Caesar carelessly but not on him. He had a fever when he was in Spain. And when the fit was on him, I did mark how he did shake. It is true, this god did shake. His coward lips did from their colour fly, and that same eye whose bend off all the world did lose his luster. I did hear him groan. I am that tongue of his that bade the Romans mark him and write his speeches in their books. Alas, it cried, give me some drink to turn your ears as a sick girl. God, it doth amaze me. A man of such a feeble temper should so get the start of the majestic world and bear the palm alone. Raw <sighs> boy. I feel like I should go and run for mayor after that. Thank you, Ollie. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go to the panel. I, I've watched that and I felt like I was Brutus. I was ready to come in with the line, man. That was amazing. Thanks, man. Oh, thank you. Jenny. Riveting. It was absolutely, I was totally spellbound. Um, it's like hearing it for the first time and understanding what this conniving, Person, I, it's just extraordinary, Ollie. I mean, you did a wonderful job, um, and it and it worked so well within the context of, of um, talking to that camera as though it was your intimate friend. Yes, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you, Papa. Anything from you? Yeah, man, great effort, man. Really well done. I really enjoyed that. I thought, I think you've got like a real natural affinity with the text. You make it, you just make it sound really easy. It's really easy to, uh, for us to access what um, your character is going through and, 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 and what you're saying. Um, yeah, I think it's really great. I've not, I've not really got any notes to, to give. Just like, um, keep going. Well done. Thank you, Papa. Brilliant, man. Ollie, anything you want to... So how did you find it? Uh, I found it, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I think I've, uh, I've looked at this particular speech before um, and I think Darren's actually seen me do it. Um, and in the past, I think I've looked at it a bit too, um, 
kind of one dimensionally. And I think being able to just kind of relax and look at it a bit more naturally as if, uh, as if I was just talking with a friend, kind of like what Jenny mentioned, um, that's when it, a clip came for me, uh, which is why I said it as if I was just me in Bruce's home and, you know, we're just kind of having a chat and I'm like, listen, I want to talk to you about something. So yeah, it's been great. It's been a great opportunity. So thank you guys for the feedback as well. Brilliant, man. Well done. Great job. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to our next performance, and that is Sarah. And Sarah is also a graduate of Intermission. She was with us in 2016. Um, at the moment, she says on COVID-19, it's made her reflect on what she truly cares about in life and what truly matters to her. And preparing for the monologue slam, Sarah says this experience has been fun and kept her mind busy and kept her involved in what she loves to do, which is act. Um, and so we're going to see her act. And Sara is going to play Gonorrell from King Lear. So we're going to go and join her in her space. And Gonorrell's father, just to put it into context, King Lear is retired and residing at her castle. She is fed up with his demands and obnoxious behaviour. That sounds familiar. I think I heard my wife say the same thing about me recently. But anyway, that's another story. So let's go and join Sara in her space and see what she has to say. Oswald. Oswald. Morning. I think you're going to have to cancel my 1.30 appointment. Yeah, it's not going to work out. Can you just reschedule that for me? Thank you. Oh, hold on. Dad's calling me. Yes, Dad. What? what? What on earth is going on? What are you talking about? No, 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 don't do anything. No, listen to me, wait till you guys return home. No, no, dad, dad, do not do anything. Listen to me, dad, hello, dad. Did my father strike my gentleman for charging his fault? Oh, by day and night he wrongs me. Every hour he flashes into one gross crime or other that sets us all at odds. Oh no, enjoy it. His nights grow riotous and himself upbraids us on every trifle. When he returns from hunting, I will not speak with him. Say I'm sick. If you come slack of former services, you shall do well. The fault of it, I'll answer. Put on what weary negligence you please. You and your fellow servants, I'll have it come to question. If you distaste it, let into my sister, whose mind and mine I know in that are one, not to be overruled. Idle old man, that still would manage those authorities he hath given away. Now by my life, old fools are babes again. We must be used with checks of flatteries when they are seen abused. Remember what I've said. Make sure you cancel that meeting and let me know when dad returns home. Thank you, Sarah. Gone around. The boss, boss lady, yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of appointments there to handle, yeah? Brilliant. Yeah. All right, we're going to go over to our panel and get some feedback. Abigail, I'm going to come over to you. How did you find that? Sis, congratulations. Thank you, I love how you set it. If, like, I don't know if I'm just projecting because obviously lockdown, but it feels like you're working from home. And like, uh -huh. well, yeah, so I was wondering like what kind of, what you did to um, get to these choices about like, using your phone and incorporating a phone call with your dad? I just wanted to improvise because I think this, the speech, if you starting off the speech by day and night, he wrongs me. I just wanted to add a bit of context. So then it was a bit more understood for the audience. So that's why I did that. Nice, lovely, lovely. Yeah, it really gave us that context. And it just, it just felt like a frustrated daughter who, do you know what I mean? The honesty of it. So well done. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abigail. Uh, Papa, I'm going to come to you because you've been in the production of King Lear uh, twice. Yeah, that was proper spot on. Well done, Sarah. That was like properly good. I re I actually really, really, really loved the way you contextualised it because it just like completely rooted me in the situation. It really allowed me to empathise with what um with just like how irritating your dad is and just like how <laughs> reckless his behaviour is and how uh, how much it's impacting you as a character. I thought I thought it was properly brilliant and like moment to moment completely truthful um you're on top of it yeah i thought it was really excellent well done thank you any uh thing you want to say to the panel any questions or um well thanks guys you guys are great obviously and yeah thanks for the opportunity and allowing us to be a part of it and just shining light on intermission as well because this is so important for people like us and yeah so thank you Thank you, Sarah. Wonderful. Well done. Okay, so we're going to move on now. And our next performer is Ibrahim. And Ibrahim is a current member of Intermission Youth. During lockdown, he is workshopping with us on The Tempest uh, and trying to learn how to write scripts. Uh, COVID-19, he says, has helped him stay more focused uh, on what he wants to achieve in life. And the monologue slam, he says, has helped him gain new experiences as he has been working with RSC actors. Um, so we're gonna go and join Ibrahim in his space. And Ibrahim is going to be performing one of Shakespeare's most iconic characters, uh, Iago. Um, and just to put this into context, Iago wants revenge against his friend Othello and will do anything and step on anyone to get it. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't hear you properly. Put your camera on, bro. All right. <laughs> uh, thus do I ever make my full my purse. <laughs> ah! uh, I hate Othello. And it is for abroad that tricks my sheep. He's violating my office, tampered with my goods. You get me? I know not for it to be true, but I, for me, suspicion in that kind would be as if for surety. You get me? What? Bro. He checks for me proper. The better shall my purpose work on him. Cash was a sweet boy, a proper man. Let's see now. To get his place and to prove up my will in double knavery. How? How? Hmm. Let's see. After some time to abuse of fellas A that Casio is too familiar with Desdemona to casual, close, and comfy. Ooh! <laughs> casual have person, and smooth disposed to be suspected, framed to make women false. I've seen the best of them act up in his presence. Of fellows of a free and open nature, <laughs> and fix men honest, that but seem to be so. <laughs> and would be as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are. <laughs> ah, it is engendered. I got it, fam. <laughs> Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light. Anyways, ask your cousin if I can borrow his straps in it. Yeah, that would do. Mm. Yes, Iago, you little snake. Uh, snakey Iago, yeah? Yeah. Just plotting. <laughs> plotting on man's downfall. <laughs> yeah. Well done, man. I must say that that rendition was from uh, Intermission's version of a fellow which we called uh, The Ring of Envy. And then we did it again in 2013 called A Fellow Remix. 
So it's not your original version, it's a, it's a, a remix. Uh, but well done, man, brilliant. We're gonna go to the panel. Um, I heard some laughter there as well. So I'm gonna come to you, Papa, because you seem like you enjoyed that. <laughs> Absolutely loved that. I thought that was so, 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 so brilliant. And like, I, I, I think I feel like a broken record here today, but like, I just, like, I think, we always talk about like how Shakespeare is relevant and like why are we still doing Shakespeare 500 or 470 years later? Um, it's because it still speaks to us and we can still say his words in our voice and it still means something to us. And like, it really felt like those words meant something in your voice. You really just owned it. You owned it and you took control of it. And yeah, you found some great humor, great joy, great conniving menace. Like, I loved it. Really well done. Thank you. Wicked. Nice. Abigail, how about you? <clears throat> yeah, that was great. That was great. I feel like you really, you really enjoyed yourself and it was very charismatic. Like you, you, you put yourself in there and it felt like you were taking the time to, you know, laugh and it felt devious and playful. And as well, there was something interesting about the use of the mirror where it felt like we weren't ever like really getting the true Iago. I think it would have been, it would have helped with connecting if we were able to see you a bit more, but I think it was a really interesting choice in terms of that, the use of your reflection as well. So yeah, really nice take. Wicked, nice. Jenny, I'm gonna to come to you. Yeah, it was a very theatrical thing to do, playing with the mirror, playing with the phone, talking there, letting your ideas come out. And I love it when you use the language and those words kind of pop out there. Cassius being a proper man. I mean, it's, it, when you do that, it just, you know, it sends shivers down one, just listening to the way you use words and um, they spit out sometimes. It's that, lovely, really lovely. Yeah. Well done, Ibrahim. And the mirror was, was, was your idea, wasn't it, Ibrahim? You kind of saw the mirror and then thought, yeah, I want to play around with that because yeah. you said you, your words, you said you felt it kind of helped with the two-facedness of, of the other. Um, yeah. Which was cool and you've got this brilliant face and you've got this brilliant ability as well to be very likable in one moment and then all of a sudden you you, you take us to this kind of evil side which i think you know is, is brilliant um you got anything you'd like to say to the panel yeah thanks for this opportunity like really because i've just been at home really like trying to write scripts and it's good to, like get my mind off something else and stuff and work on other stuff and like it's hard to get up and decide but when it comes to acting, like I can get up and do it. Like that's one thing I can say I can do. And this helps like make use of my time. That's it. Yeah. So brilliant. So what happened when you was meant to meet me at 10 o'clock and you kept on coming at three o'clock in the afternoon because you, that's when you woke up. What? When? What do you mean you like to get up and, and you like that's what you like to get up and do? What, tell everybody what time you're waking up in the morning, in the afternoon. Eh? <laughs> my sleep has messed up. I know, I know. <laughs> Well done, man. You smashed it, bro. Love. All right, cool. Okay, we're going to move on to our, oh no, our final performance of the evening. Oh. Okay, cool. But it's a good one. And uh, like they all have been. And this is Rebecca, who is also a current member of uh, the cohort. And she says, during lockdown, her experience, uh, she says, is a household with a lot of people including herself, um, but many have lost lives, she said, and people she knows have lost their lives. However, this time has allowed her family to spend more time with each other, which is unusual. And they have been able to be mentally, physically, and spiritually supportive of one another. Uh, she says that the monologue slam has made her look forward to something exciting and feels like intermission are still very much a family and connected during a time like this, which is not one we've ever experienced before. It's really positive and she's extremely grateful to be a part of it. Um, Rebecca is gonna be performing Helena from Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, so we're gonna go over and join her in her space. Uh, and to put it into context, Helena is chasing love, but unfortunately it keeps running away. She longs to be as beautiful as her friend Hermia. Over to you, Helena. Dimitri, Dimitri, Dimi, Dimi, oh, this time's always playing pain with my life. 
Dear diary, oh, I'm out of breath in this fun chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grave. Happy is Hermia, wheresoever she lies, for she have blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright, nor with so tear? If so, my eyes are often a washed than head. No, no. I am as ugly as a bear, for beast that meets me, run away for fear. Therefore, no marvel thou Demetrius, do as a monster fly my presence back. Oh, oh wicked and dissembling blasts of mine made me compare to Hermia's fiery eyes. Who's there? No, if you're not Demetrius, I'm not going to answer. Oh. Lysander, hey, on the ground. Oh. Lysander, dead or asleep. I see no blood, no wounds. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. Hey, Jesus, hey, oh, oh God. <laughs> oh. oh, Rebecca, <laughs> you, you're killing me. <laughs> I can't. Dear diary, all right, I was gone from that. I was finished from when you said, Dear diary. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. All right, we're going to. We're going to go over to our panel to hear what they think of that. Abs, I'm going to start with you. So this is definitely my first time seeing Shakespeare meets Nollywood. <laughs> <laughs> and I am definitely sold. I am definitely sold. It just felt so playful. It felt like you were, you were so in it. You were having some fun. And yeah, I just wish that you you could have seen all of our reactions as well, because like all I know is that we're over here busting up. Thank you. Yeah, the body. <laughs> Thank you, Abigail. Oh, Jenny. <laughs> it's just so engaging. And I love seeing you in that bath cap. I was taken entirely to the Caribbean where everybody goes out like that, <laughs> ready for the evening. <laughs> Um, and it just was totally, I just delightful and awful. And you felt for her. Um, it, but so funny. I mean, lovely, just really lovely. Yeah, really. <laughs> you, you made all the changes. You took us everywhere with it. Oh, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Papa, did that take you back to your roots, my Oh, friend? my <laughs> God, Charlie. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I was crying with laughter. That was so, so, so good. So funny. Um, I agree with Abigail. Like, I really did not know that Nollywood was actually the perfect framework for Shakespeare. What have we been waiting for? Do you know what I mean? It's got the drama. It's got the comedy. It's got the stress. It's perfect, honestly. Like, someone, someone called the RSC today, I say. Anyway, um, I thought that was a fantastic performance, really imaginative. I loved it when you took us outside and we saw Lysander on the floor of the wig. It was, it was amazing. So oh, wow. congratulations. Very, very, well done, very well good. Thank you, Thank you well, very much. Rebecca, I'm sure you can see by the response of the panel, you did a brilliant job. Have you got anything you want to say? Yeah, I just really want to thank you all for coming out tonight and just supporting us through um, the monologue slam and just um, making something like this, Darren, Cecilia, Leela, Claire, and I just give it, honestly give it all to you guys just for being here, tuned in and supporting us. And the Dear Diary thing is Darren's been watching too much Nollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> but um, no, I just, um, access is something I have never done before. Um, it was even during Excluded that um, um, Darren and Nana, they 
constantly calling me auntie. Like to this day, Darren's forever calling me auntie. I'm thinking, oh, do I really look like an auntie? Really? <laughs> but I just like it was, and even during um rehearsals, like trying out um Miss Portia, and just one time Nana had said, oh, try an African accent, like try an African Miss Portia. And I was really nervous at the time. So I thought, no, I have another opportunity to do so. Let me do it. Let me just do it. And um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just very thankful that I'm not as nervous as I was a few days ago. And just for the support that I've got, man, it's, it's been amazing. Thank you so much. Well done, man. You were amazing. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well, that concludes our performances for the night. Um, and I'm sure you'll agree with me when I say we were spoilt, rotten. Uh, what an array of talent uh, and such bold choices and, and great imaginations bringing Shakespeare slap bang into the 21st century. And you saw it here first on Intermission Use My Love Slam. So thank you, a huge thank you to all the wonderful performers. And even though they can't hear us clap, let's all just give them a massive uh, round of applause and show them the appreciation that we have for their amazing talent and gifts. So thank you all the performers. Okay, so now we're going to go on to our Q&A section. So I can see that we've got quite a few questions in the Q&A box for our panel and also for our trustee Mark Rylance. Um, and still, if you've got any more questions, if now's the, the opportunity to put them in the box because we're going to crack on with some of these. So we're going to go to the first question here. Uh, and it's from Caroline, and she has a question for all three of the panelists. What was the last thing you worked on before lockdown? And have you been able to work on anything during lockdown? So what's the last thing you worked on before lockdown? And have you been able to work on anything after lockdown? Maybe you can answer one of the two questions. Um, we'll start with you, Jenny. Um, <clears throat> well, the tenth, um series of Call the Midwife was cancelled. Uh, fortunately, I had started on another project, which was to work with Intermission Youth Theatre. And that has been really exciting because we're doing uh, Zoom gatherings and I'm watching, I'm just, I'm just being a severity in the background, watching on the island uh, in the Tempest as I see these wonderful people arrive on it and make what they will of the text as we're slowly going through it. So that's the current project and it's great fun. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, Mark, what have you been up to during lockdown? Or anything, anything exciting or how is it for you? Uh, yeah, I had a few things I was working on, but I've been mostly trying to, uh, been looking at, uh, all the ecological work that we could do in the country and, and trying to think of ways that this unemployment period for the theatre people that we might, you know, move out and do some of the amazing planting of trees and things like that and restoring of wetlands. And it's a thing that a man called President uh, Roosevelt did in the 1930s when there was great unemployment. So I've been, been learning a lot, learning a lot about uh, the uh, amazing work that could be done in the, uh, in the countryside and that that might be something that we could do during this period of perhaps two years when the theaters, theaters will be closed, which I'm sure we all share is a, is a bit of a fearful and sad thought. Mm. Thanks. Sure, thank you. Papa, what have you been up to? Yeah, similarly, I've, I've kind of been thinking about um, ways to be, um, I don't know, ways, ways to maximize this time, you know, like, Similarly to, to Mark, I've been thinking a lot about like ecologically um, what changes we can make or what kind of like efforts we, I watched an amazing um, live screening and I'd recommend this to anyone. There's a, you can watch for free a play called The Encounter on YouTube at the moment, which is a complicite play. It's a one man show by Simon McBurney about the, about kind of like a guy who goes into the Amazon basin and spend some time with the indigenous people. And there's a lot of like really kind of enlightening work that's been done there by indig indigenous people that are fighting um, the, the terrible kind of deforest deforestation that's happening in the Amazon. So yeah, similarly trying to make the most of my time in a, in a positive way. So maybe it sounds like you and Mark should link up, mate. 100%. Save the world. Brilliant. Abigail, what about you, sweetie? What have you been up to? 
Yeah, I've been really fortunate that I've been still, you know, having the opportunity to work on a few things throughout lockdown um, and also take the time to, you know, develop myself as well. Um, so I'm currently working on a project called Better In Person with a, an amazing organisation called Burn Bright. Um, so on Monday at 8pm, we're going to be um, on Zoom um, sharing some stories. So five writers have been commissioned to write five short plays all about conversations that are better in person. So um, just, just Google um, Burn Bright Better in Person if you wanna check it out because the, the lineup is, is used to be amazing. So yeah, feeling really blessed to still be making and creating in this time. Great, thank you, thank you panel. So everybody seems to be keeping themselves busy which is brilliant. And then I think that we can take something from that. We've got another question here from Matilda. Um, I'm gonna push you for an answer on this. Yeah, panel. She's curious to know if you were to do a monologue like this over Zoom, and you probably, you may have done already, I don't know. But if you were to do a monologue like this over Zoom, which monologue would you like to do? I'll give you a couple of seconds, a couple of seconds more, and then I'm gonna push you for an answer. Right, Mr. Rylance, I'm coming to you first. What's the monologue you like to do? <laughs> I'm so blown away tonight. <laughs> I've been laughing and weeping here. I just, I just feel completely lacking in confidence to do anything after watching how brilliant the, the acting's been last night and tonight. <laughs> I just don't know. My <laughs> mind goes blank in terror that I would, that would do anything as good as these people. But uh, I, I, was doing, um, I was doing that beautiful uh, uh, first prologue to Henry V, Oh, for a Muse of Fire the other day for a theater that wanted it for fundraising. And it was, it was really fun actually to do it so intimately, you know, right up by the camera here and not have to go out and, you know, fill a whole theater, but just to speak it intimately. So I was enjoying that one. But cool. uh, honestly, that would be my answer. Good answer, thank you. And we got a lion out of you as well. So we've got more than we bargained for there, thank you. <laughs> Ab Abigail, got a speech in your head that you'd like to do over Zoom? Yeah, I would, I would pick um, one of Portia's monologues from Merchant of Venice um, when um, they're, they're choosing the caskets. Um, yeah, there's a beautiful monologue in Act 3, Scene 2, which I've just always thought is absolutely stunning. So I'd love to have a crack at that. Brilliant. Nice. And Jenny? I was thinking of women's speeches and then tonight I realised how they can translate and anybody can do any of the pieces and how wonderful it is just to hear those words. And I'm, I'm at a loss, but I mean, there's so many extraordinary, um, I, I'm also feeling a little bit like Mark, which is, I'm actually <laughs> overwhelmed by what everybody's done and I don't feel <laughs> completely comfortable about saying what I could do. Um, uh, I mean, one that touches me a lot is, is Prospero's um, speech in The Tempest because, uh, there are two. One is one is when he talks about just being such stuff as dreams are made of, which people know. And also when he talks about burying his book, because in both of them there is such despondence at the world, and such uh, he has such hope, and there is such loss. And I just, uh, I, you know, it would be it's wonderful to explore. And and I think tonight it's very exciting hearing what people do when they bring everything to you in a completely fresh way. Um, so I'd have to look at it in a very fresh way. Wonderful, thank you. And Papa, got a speech in your head there? Um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 to be fair, I'm not actually even sh for sure if this is a Shakespeare play or not, but there's, um, there's a speech in a play about um, uh, Thomas More. That, oh, um, yes. um, and it's a speech about how um, refugees were treated in um, in the 15th or 16th century, I think. Um, and I think it really speaks to our political situation today, especially the other day when um, uh, Priya Patel released that new information about how like you had to have a certain whatever to be able to get a visa into this country. And like a lot of like really jingoistic um, exclusionary politics and politics speak 
is is been is 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 finding its way into the mainstream, which I think is disgusting. Um, I think a speech like that really speaks to today. So I'd I'd I, 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 I'd love to do that if that counts as a Shakespearean speech. Yeah, I think it counts as a Shakespearean speech. We actually did that. I see Mark smiling because uh, last year when we did Shakespeare Walks for the Globes, for the Globe, sorry, that speech was a uh, was uh, in in the piece that we did. Uh, on the walks and it's a fantastic speech. I know exactly, exactly what you're talking about. Um, that's wonderful. That's a great, uh, a great variety there. We've got the Merchant, we've got one of the Henrys, we've got the Tempest, we've got Thomas More. So ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be our next lineup for the Intermission Youth Monologue Slam. Uh, we'll, we'll confirm the date later, but uh, you heard it here first. When you He's going to be on the panel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to put the young people on the panel. <laughs> yeah. I'm terrified. <laughs> All oh, right, wicked. So uh, we've got a, another question here. Do you think, and this is from a YouTube uh, audience member, and anyone on the panel can answer this, do you think there will be any positive outcomes or changes in our industry to come from this current situation? Uh, perhaps not right now, but maybe in the long run. So do we think there's gonna be anything positive to come out of this current situation for the industry? Anyone can take that question. Well, I think there's going to be a great buildup of the desire to act and the desire to make theatre. And uh, that's like having, you know, a full tank of fuel, isn't it? I've, I've, I've seen very wonderful actors just lose the desire and you can get it knocked out of you by bad experiences. But th this, I certainly feel it in myself. I didn't realise how much I loved the theatre and how much I loved the community and taking part in things and you know, whether they're perfect or not, I don't really care so much anymore. I just would like to be with a group of people playing and, and in the theater. And, and I expect all the young people in intermission and the panel and everyone is just realizing this is a really precious and lucky thing we have. And that's a very valuable thing, the desire and uh, ha having a sensation of it, a feeling of it. That, 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 that's, a, that's an energy that's valuable. And I think we're going to come out with a, a lot of that, and maybe a lot of new forms and of writing and imagination as well. Thank you. Anyone else on the panel? Um, I I I really hope that there's quite a seismic change in like the way that we appreciate um, unexpected people because I think it's been you know it's been brilliant that we've seen people like clapping for the NHS and like there's been a lot of talk about appreciating key workers and appreciating our you know post men and women and appreciating delivery drivers and people that are working in supermarkets who otherwise were kind of just like invisible before these kind of things and I think that really applies to um, theatres and film sets you know there's a lot of people that work on film sets that you could go a whole day without talking to properly and appreciating them for for who they are just because they're not the director or the number one on the call sheet you know so I hope it brings about a change in the way we really appreciate the humanity of everyone that we work with. Mm. Someone nice. said at the very beginning of when we first went into lockdown, uh, it's a bit like being told by God, go to your room and just think about what you've done. And, and I hope that thinking <laughs> is a wonderful idea. Yeah, the children know what that's about. But I hope that the thinking about it will stay with us afterwards. It would be sad if that if we've had a chance to go to our rooms and think about what we've done and the effect we've had and where we are, if we don't take that with us afterwards, it'll be sad. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a couple more questions. This one's from Destiny. How do you find humour in dark topics to keep an audience engaged? That's the first part of the question. How do you find humour in dark topics? And then another part of the question is, do reactions even matter to you as an actor from audience? Do, do you expect an audience to react a certain way to something you're doing? And, and does that even matter? Is that, is that yeah, there's, there's two parts to that question, dark humor. Um, and does, does an audience reaction even matter to you as, as performers? Um, let's go to you, Papa. Um. In terms of humour, I think there's a yin and yang to it, you know, like um, there's darkness in comedy and there's comedy in like, 
tragedy you know the two are kind of like you can't really have one without another we've all seen those like terrible tattoos that people have on with um the the mask with the smiley face and the sad face you know the, the two go hand in hand so I think if you really kind of like mind the truth of a moment as opposed to chasing the humor or chasing the darkness of it often a little bit of both come out if you really like chase the the authenticity the authenticity and, and, and honesty of the moment about reactions from audiences it's like it's an interesting uh, it's a really great question I think and especially in theatres, I think um, I, th I think it's difficult to ignore the uh, it's difficult, and I don't think it's right to ignore the reaction of an audience. I don't think I, I definitely don't think you should try and second guess or try and predict the reaction of an audience. But like theatre is about the relationship between performers and audiences. You can't have a play really without an audience. It, it is as important a character in the process as the actors or the director or anyone is. So um, I think it's a communal experience. So you need both of them. So I think actors need to need audience members without kind of being like, I beg you laugh at me or I beg you cry at what I'm doing, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Papa. Uh, Jenny. <clears throat> yeah, I, well, if you think of Shakespeare, a lot of the really darkest moments are followed by extremely funny ones, or they, they create funny situations from, from really difficult times. Um, and he plays humor, and that happens in King Lear all the time, where you go from laughter to tears and pain. Um, so I do think they go together. In, in terms of audience, audiences and reactions are very important. You, you can never predict how they're gonna go. And sometimes one's hugely disappointed when you get a big laugh at something you thought was terribly sad. <laughs> Or indeed the reverse, is so that you get absolutely nothing and you thought that was very funny. Um, but the, the point is, it is a conversation. When you're on stage, you are trying to present someone's piece of work, you know, whether it's Shakespeare or whether it's a modern play, you're, you're presenting something to that audience, but you need them to be listening to you and you're listening to them all the time. And sometimes they reveal stuff to you you hadn't realized was there. Mm. You'll, you'll understand from their reactions. I've done play, I mean, you do sure, in a rehearsal room, it feels like nothing. You get in front of an audience and they start reacting to it. Oh, I see, I, I understand what that's about because the audience is guiding you as well. Yeah, fantastic, thank you, thank you. Uh, Abigail, I've got a question for you. We're gonna do two more questions because I can see we're moving on with time. Uh, Abigail, this is a question that says, I know you used to act, Abigail, and possibly still do. When did you realize at what point in your career did you realize you wanted to direct? So it was a funny one really. So I, like in terms of like my journey into acting and directing, I kind of got to a point of despair where I was working a job, I was working in advertising and I just knew that this just isn't what I want to do. So at the same time, I started trying everything that I could possibly be interested in. So I did like radio, acting, directing, filmmaking, and I was just trying loads of things at the same time. Um, but all, all like sincere interest that I, that I, you know, I have, I have, that I am passionate about. Um, and I think directing just clicked, like something about it just made sense. Um, there was something about um, being involved throughout the process and, um, you know, I mean, I think, I think that, not that there is like a personality of a director, because I think like different directors bring different things and, you know, um, but I think that I, I have always had the kind of qualities that I think make a direct, well, make me a director. And I think it wasn't until really trying it and getting into, you know, the rehearsal room that I had the opportunity to put those skills into practice. Um, yeah, it's hard to explain because it's something that just kind of happened organically, but I hope that answers the question. I think it does, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, last question, and then I would like to introduce to you our Executive Director, Sue Radford, just to tell you a little bit more about the work of Intermission before we close the show. Um, the last question is to all of the panel, if you could do anything else in life, apart from the jobs you currently do, what would it be? Jenny, go on then, we'll start with you. I, I, I fell into acting and I've always, many ways felt myself a sort of reluctant actor. Um, 
I love it. I love the world it gives me, but I would probably be much, the, I would, I love the visual world as well. And I would either have gone into graphic or design or photography. I love photographs. I love people's photograph albums. I love portraits. I love photographs. I, I think probably being a photographer. Photographer, nice. Uh, Papa. I mean, I don't want to tread on your toes, Darren, but I'd love to do what you do, man. <laughs> I'd love to, uh, I love working with young people, you know, and I love spending time with young people and um, and trying to share my experience and learn from them, you know. And like, I, I, I think, I think in another life, yeah, I would love to do a lot of a lot a lot more youth work than at the moment I have the time to do. So I've got a lot of time and respect for people like you. Oh, bless you. But I'd love to be able to command the stage like you. So uh, maybe one day we can swap, see what happens. Just for the day, though, because I really do love what I do. So I want to be able to take it back. <laughs> uh, Abigail. Kind of cheating because I'm sort of working towards this already alongside what I already do. Um, but I definitely, definitely would be a healer in a holistic sense. Nice. Lovely. And Mark, finally, you. What, what would what would you be, sir, if you if you could be something else? I find myself fantasizing about being a, a rubbish man, a garbage man. I feel there's something there's something you feel like you really get something done at the end of the day. I can make a call if you want. Could you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would like to try it. Actually, I, I always wish that Mike Lee would give me a part in the film, and and I could go like Tim Spall, go and be a a rubbish man for a month. I'd probably be fed up, but I'd smell terrible. But I don't know, there's something about it that somehow in my chaotic life, there's something very ordered and regular early morning. I think there's something it could be, it, if you had a nice crew, it could be, I bet they laugh a lot. Anyway, there you go. Yeah. Thank you, brilliant. Okay, thank you to the panel for, uh, for that. Brilliant questions and some fantastic answer, answers, um, very insightful. So now I'd love to introduce you to our executive director, Sue Radford, who's going to tell you a little bit more about the work we do. Um, so Sue, over to you. Have to unmute myself. I've picked up Jenny's habit. <laughs> Thank you very much. And thanks everybody for joining us here for the second night of the Monologue Slam. And I know some of you attended last night as well. So a double thank you. Intermission Youth is all about transforming the lives of young people, particularly we work with young people who come from very challenging environments. And as you've seen tonight, we do that through the power of theatre and drama. And we do a lot of mentoring and one-on-one -on -one support. There's a huge amount of support that goes on in the background because for us, that's as important or more important than actual theater and drama. And uh, there's a huge amount of life skills coaching as well, helping them all to become the best versions of themselves they can at this particular time. Now, support for young people is even more important at this critical time. I don't know if you've been following any of the research that's been coming out about 18 to 25 year olds, but I can tell you that it shows that 18 to 25 year olds right now during this pandemic have been feeling anxious, isolated, lacking in motivation. We've heard that from some of the young people tonight. And there are real concerns for their future and not least for um, future in terms of employment. And we're thinking a lot of our young people who actually started out in the profession one, two years ago, and our theatres are closed, TV filming's off and films off. Um, and it's really hard for them to sort of compute what's going to go on in their future. So although we've had to halt our community engagement programme for the moment, we were always really committed to supporting and staying connected with our young people in our youth theatre and our graduates. And we've been thinking a lot about going forward as well. What are we going to do next? Because what's life going to be like coming out of lockdown? What are the young people who've been in isolation, maybe living alone in a hostel, in one household? What's it going to be like for them as well, as well as for all of us actually reintegrating into society, being part of community? What's community going to look like? What's society going to be? What's the new norm? So we're looking at how we can help in that context going forward, because we know there are going to be 
be a lot of questions raised uh, and there's going to be a lot of fear and anxiety. And we would like to extend that work. We know there are hundreds of thousands of young people, particularly we work in the greater London area. And there are so many young people that need the support of the type of work that we do at Intermission Youth. Now, Intermission Youth doesn't receive any government funding. We're totally reliant on the support of our donors and our supporters and our trusts. And a big shout out tonight, too, for our two major donor trusts. That's the Bishop Radford Trust and particularly the Golden Bottle Trust. And Alexander Hall, who's watching tonight, thank you, the trustees and all the staff team at Hall's Bank, because I know you're very much a family as well. We thank you so much for all the practical and financial support that you have given us over the years so consistently. So my question to you is, would you join us in this mission of Intermission Youth? And would you be part of the Intermission family? And there are a number of ways that you can do that. And that will be coming up on your screen now. So you can keep in touch by receiving uh, our e-newsletter that goes out every month. So you can join our mailing list and we keep you connected with what's coming up. Uh, you can join our Twitter account. Follow us on Twitter, very simple, at Intertheater. And it's been lovely to have some comments coming through tonight. And of course, we would love your financial support. And thank you to a number of you who've already supported us through the course of this evening. And again, up on the chat, it'll show you ways in which you can support. You can pay via PayPal account, via debit and credit card, and through online banking. So please, would you consider joining us in this mission, Intermission Youth, to continue the transformative work with these special young people, eight of whom you've seen tonight, eight of whom last night, and many, many more that we're involved with. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Um, so just before we release you, I'd just like to say a few thank yous, as you know, to um, put on a theatre production there uh, has to be teamwork involved. And we've got an amazing team uh, at Intermission. So I'd just like to say thank you to each and every one of them. So you just heard from Sue, our executive director, who works hard behind the scene to direct us in terms of strategy and all that we do. Uh, so thank you, Sue. Uh, Claire, our community manager, who basically uh, led on this project, the Monologue Slam, uh, and learned everything about everything there is to learn about webinars and Zoom. Uh, she did it in a short space of time, so congratulations and thank you, uh, Claire, for that efficiency. Um, Nana, who you heard the young people speak about, is the uh, is my deputy artistic director and uh, a brilliant mentor to the young people and facilitator. Uh, and he's really been there to kind of encourage our young people throughout this uh, period of um, COVID nineteen and uncertainty that we're going through. So big up, Nana. Big up your chest, my brother. Love to you all the time. And of course, we've got Cecilia, our production. Uh, and manager and producer behind the scenes working hard as well uh, so thank you to UC and of course Leela our administrator who has had to learn different skills um, also kind of technical skills on Zoom and the webinar and she's been amazing uh, and we're just so blessed to have such a, a, a close-knit team and family. Um, a couple more shout outs that I want to give before we go. Uh, Intermission Youth would not have been possible without the brains of its founders Rob Gillian and Janine Gillian, and I hope they're in the house tonight. I know they were here yesterday. Uh, Rob has just been appointed uh, a patron to Intermission Youth, and so it's wonderful to have him and Janine back in the fold, and we look forward to what the future holds uh, for them and the work of Intermission. And also, we've had some amazing support from industry professionals and friends of Intermission during this time. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Ollie Lyons, who helped direct some of our young people's monologues, and also Philip Carrera, who is a great friend of ours and also helped direct a lot of the monologues that you saw over the two nights. Um, and then Katie Stevens, who was also involved in helping our young people. And thank you to the RSC for lending us some of your practitioners. That's been amazing. I feel like I'm missing somebody out, but if I am, please know that you are in my heart and I am saying thank you to you silently. And I hope it echoes and reverberates wherever you are. And the final thank you I want to give is to our friend and supporter and trustee, Mr. Mark Rylance. Uh, and he's a, an amazing man. And this evening wouldn't have been possible without Mark. And just so you will know, each young person that took part in the monologue slam yesterday and this evening is going to receive a gift um, that has been donated by Mark Rylance. And it's a fantastic gift that will, I'm sure, bring a lot of happiness to each one of the performers that you saw. So thank you, Mark for your constant support, for your constant encouragement, 
um, and direction. Uh, we're very grateful to have you in this family. I think that's it from us. Uh, thank you again to our audience and thank you. There's been some really lovely comments in, in the uh, comment board about how much you've enjoyed the two evenings, those that have been here twice, Lindsay Fricker, please know that I have noticed all your amazing, encouraging messages and thank you to you for that. And everybody else that has put um, some really positive stuff in the chat, uh, we shall take that away and I'm sure it would give us fuel and energy to continue through COVID-19. Um, I think that's it from us. So everybody have a good evening. God bless you and thank you for coming. And do please, Stay in touch, uh, go on our website to see what we're gonna be doing in the future. And remember, we're gonna have a monologue slam coming up, uh, which features Mark Rylance, Jenny Agata, Papa S.E.A. Du, and Abigail Suell. You heard it here first. Good night, God bless. Intermission Youth was set up in 2008 by Rob and Janine Gillian and Darren Raymond. It has supported hundreds of young people from challenging backgrounds through drama and mentoring. Intermission Youth runs community programmes in prisons, schools and pupil referral units. During this pandemic, we have continued to work on exciting projects with our current cohort and graduates. We appreciate our supporters helping us to continue our work. Please feel free to make a donation. Upon a time I was the Duke of Milan Loved my life, loved my wife Had a baby girl, called her Miranda Sadly I lost my wife in labour That's when I lost my faith in the saviour How could the Lord take away what he gave ya? It totally broke me, I needed her back Started reading magic that was painted in black Neglected my duties, oh so slack Took myself away in my studies, I was wrapped My brother had to help take the load off my back So I gave him the state just until I came back I loved him, of course I would trust him with that Who would ever think that he would stab me in my back With the king of Naples, he made a pack Bought me out to sea on the raft, made a crap Yeah, I broke a dad, bro I like a zam, I got the enemies in the palm of my hand I gon blow like the ocean, rage like Satan I sway for revenge, it's obvious and blatant I broke a dad, bro I like a zam, I got the enemies in the palm of my hand I gon blow like the ocean, rage like Satan I sway for revenge, it's obvious and blatant We came ashore on this island, bare as could be Then I saw a spirit confined in a tree Screaming, howling, please set me free Don't we all just wanna be free? Together, we control the earth and the sea But first things first, you answer to me Then I came across this half of a man Deformed in his shape, called Caliban Showed us around the whole island Fresh springs, brine pits, barren place, fertile This was a relationship that was worthwhile Taught him our language, showed him a new style Then one day, he got brave Tried to take advantage of my 
veranda in the cave That's my baby girl, I lost it with rage From that day Caliban became my slave yeah. I broke out that bro, I like a zam I got the enemies in the palm of my hand I gon' blow like the ocean, rage like Satan I sway for revenge, it's obvious and blatant I broke out that bro, I like a zam I got the enemies in the palm of my hand I gon' blow like the ocean, rage like Satan I sway for revenge, it's obvious and blatant Twelve years past, we're still here Miranda's older, Afro hair This life that I've carved out, it's not fair She's searching for truth, daddy what's out there? The hours now come, so all I bear It breaks her heart, I wipe her tears I look into her eyes, I see she's wise beyond the years I need to let her go, but that's my biggest fear I just got news that my enemies are here They're gonna feel my wrath, I've waited 12 years I swear for revenge, I swear, I swear Repent your sins or you die right here I messed up, twisted, haunted, confused I've captured, tormented, the slave and abused I'm broken, I'm crying, inside I'm dying I I long for forgiveness and God knows I'm trying I block her dad, bro, I like her zam I got the enemies in the palm of my hand I'm gonna blow like the ocean, rage like Satan I sway for revenge, it's obvious and blatant I block her dad, bro, I like her zam I got the enemies in the palm of my hand I'm gonna blow like the ocean, rage like Satan I sway for revenge, it's obvious, it's blatant Yeah it's their Montoya. Sorters, if you were dismayed, go release them, Ariel. We are such dumb no. dreams and made of true. Mine would be here, yeah. confined well, by a human. Or the rarer to action nations. is in virtue than in vengeance. Let your indulgence set me free. free. Their senses are restored, and mine shall, and they shall be themselves. Boy got style, yeah, boy got swagger He's a top runner, number one gunner And if you wanna see him crown blood, then you're gonna Throw up your hands and vote for Jay Caesar Boy got style, yeah, boy got swagger He's a top runner, Young number Caesar, one gunner Caesar. And if you wanna see him crown blood, then yeah. you're gonna You might find me in your area JC's are with the merry bunch Just trying to get my merits up and pass school for the credit crunch I'm not a full blood and if you run talk then I get the guns Let it bun ya, like a suit man I blaze the gun ya But me now smoke the skunker Getting her high off the high grade tie Weighed my frame of mind, king status, so I Came to the school and grabbed the tie Prefect, cats coming at me all high But I'm like, I ain't here for the beef train Exposed, skeptical brothers with your earlobes closed Open them up and hear them my poems, my quotes, and if you feel what I'm saying, then pass me your votes. Caesar, I'll be on the park with the pros, and I got flows, and I got hoes. Girls all around me like I'm messing with the bow, and I roll, I'm paro. First step into the school, I'm that bad dude from the Knicks, like I'm shooting hoops. I ain't a prick, I'm a leader with a passion to spit. Now tell your chick, get back on my mm. gash, give me gash, give me gash, give me brain like an education, dedication, weight, patience. Turn a fit dude into a patient Caesar ain't a fool, young CC I'm hating, debating Like I'm waiting for these sly guys Mad cause I got the limelight Caesar ain't sitting around I keep it moving like a drive-by Came to the school to rule And I don't follow no classroom rules I'm that fly guy Caesar Don't forget the name And if I live long It should make the Hall of Fame And even if I'm slain But they're still gonna remember my name Gaius as high as Messiah And you done know Mark and is my rider Plus Brutus be a part of the cypher Plus Brutus be a part of the cypher Throw up your hands and vote for Jay Caesar Boy got style, yeah Boy got swagger He's a top runner Number one gunner And if you wanna see him crown blood Then you're gonna Throw up your hands and vote for Jay Caesar Boy got style, yeah Boy got swagger He's a top runner Number one gunner And if you wanna see him crown blood Then you're gonna